It's time that we had a very hard conversation. Oh, harder, Daddy! No, no, not that kind of hard. I'll say it straight out. Hollywood hates Has Been Hotel. And while this is a silly issue in and of itself, it's indicative of a much deeper problem that has roots which snake their way into the lives of so many other creators, including novice authors like us here on the internet. And it's about time that we start talking about it in order to look for solutions because that's the only way that we can fix this and ensure a better future for all the wonderful creatives out there. Hi there everyone, Lars here from Camille's Harem. Not just a podcast for novice writers by novice writers, but also a YouTube channel by novice writers for novice writers. Because writing is an adventure, it's more fun with friends. Now, to help set the stage proper for this particular discussion, and what even got me down this rabbit hole, all comes from a somewhat embarrassing and disappointing debacle. And from here on out, no. I do not want anyone to go out and harass the people involved, because that is antithetical to who and what we want to be here on Camille's Harem. Anyway, back when Has Been Hotel premiered on Amazon, I was greeted the same day with notifications for videos tearing into the series. Personally, I've been looking forward to the season ever since the pilot. Mostly for Alistair, though. Hello! Oh, dear, if I wanted to hurt anyone here, I would have done so already. Now let's give these burning fools a place to dwell. Take it, boys! <laughs> oh, yeah. Definitely doing a video in the near future about charismatically chaotic characters. Subscribe so you're notified for when that comes out. <laughs> Dear T, for you, kid. <laughs> but back to my tale. When I saw these notifications, I thought, hey, let's just see what people even have to say. What shocked me to see, though, was WDW Pro doing a takedown of Has Been Hotel without even having seen a single episode. Now again, do not go and bug that channel because Pro and Friends already really stepped into it because, well, their comments were full of people praising Has Been Hotel and encouraging Pro and Pals to check it out. The response was so overwhelming that they did an impromptu live stream to at least give themselves the faintest veneer of community, discussion, and objectivity. Ultimately, WDW Pro's channel decided that the series was not suitable for kids, obviously, or Christian consumption, not in my good Christian house, and that Has Been Hotel was made by someone who didn't have enough life experience to be a showrunner? Oh boy. Now, while people are entitled to level criticism at Has Been Hotel, and it's far from being a perfect show, I thought that the verdict was laughable, and apparently so did many of their viewers, who once again insisted that Pro and Pals actually watch the show. And they kept it up for a few weeks, asking them to report on the big numbers that Amazon was publishing for Has Been, and if they were accurate. However, all that anyone got was a shrug and the sound of crickets. And sadly, we cannot rely on Amazon to report correct numbers. If anyone remembers the wonkiness surrounding the Rings of Power, they announced 100 million views for the first episode and insisted that it still had enough viewership to make the Game of Thrones series blush. But then, absolutely no one is excited for Season 2 right now? Hmm, things are a little bit suspicious there. Amazon does their best to hide the numbers, but there are methods and leaks to get accurate ratings and reportings. But both Hollywood and Hollywood detractors here on YouTube have been absolutely silent on the matter. And that's where I began to grow suspicious. Why wasn't Hollywood praising this animated series to Sunday and back? Well, I read through a lot of articles written for Has Been Hotel, and it quickly became clear to me that most publications were just simply regurgitating similar talking points over and over again. While they all praised Vivian Medrano's tenacity to rise from YouTube fame and tackle a hellish musical, by the end of most of these articles, kind of slipped in where they thought most people would not read them, the authors all expressed massive doubts that an R-rated cartoon series could do much of anything. And that 
was the final word. Since then, there's been an eerie silence emanating from Hollywood in regards to Hasbro Hotel, and just like WDW Pro, their first word was also the final on the matter. For weeks, I dug around and tried to find confirming evidence of what Amazon was reporting. What I found was cold silence from Hollywood, an absolute unwillingness from many to accept that the show even exists or was doing anything positive for Amazon. Fans of the series have done many fantastic videos, on the other hand, extolling Hasbin's virtues and rightfully offering criticism as well. A lot of excellent discussions have been made in regards to animation, themes, characters, a top-heavy plot, and the music. That's all been hashed out by... The fans! They're the only ones talking about this! I finally found some answers as to why all of this was happening, why we were just hearing from the fans and not from anyone else, interestingly enough, from the same people who wanted to just dismiss Hasbin Hotel here on YouTube. Now, they came from a roundabout conversation, they weren't necessarily talking about Hasbin Hotel, but after connecting some of the dots and seeing some of the people they're referring to, some of the issues within Hollywood, finally everything started coming together as I connected the dots and realized that quite simply, Hollywood hates Hasbin Hotel. They despise its success for the following three reasons. Number one, they hate animation. Number two, they are incredibly jealous of Vivian. And three, they hate that an underdog did everything that they aspire to do and keep failing at. Let's break it down. Hollywood in the past two decades has really turned against animation. There's always been a debate about whether animation is for everyone or just for kids. And that debate should have been settled with Disney's Snow White, which was praised as proof that animation could appeal to adults and children. But since the early 2000s, it was Disney that began leading the charge against the medium. Go figure. During the early to mid 2000s, we got many amazing cartoon series and movies that pushed the envelope in terms of animation, storytelling, and scope. Avatar The Last Airbender, the He-Man reboot, Thundercats reboot, Jackie Chan Adventures, and so many more that built on the grit and the scale of stuff like Batman the Animated Series back in the 90s. It was a high point for Western animation, but Disney was upset that they weren't making buco bucks in animation and began strangling their own old golden goose. And you can actually see this playing out in how the House of Mouse tried to kill Gravity Falls not too long afterwards, despite its immense popularity. And then they undersold Tangled the Animated Series, effectively killing it. They sidestepped Amphibia and outright backstabbed the Owl House. And what they say in Hollywood is this, that as Disney goes, so goes the industry. Suddenly, animation was just for kids, the youngest of kids. Animation wasn't profitable. Animation was too expensive. Animation is dumb. Animation is a dying medium. That changed for a bit, however, during COVID, when animation suddenly became accessible. Why? Well, because animation is cheap. Animation is fun until Disney again signaled that they were largely done with the medium. So as a result of this two decade long decay, in large part thanks to the House of Mouse, the industry is set against animated properties and happily spreads falsehoods that audiences don't want animated shows. Ha! Tell that to hell of a boss and lackadaisy. Next, people in Hollywood are extremely jealous. That's because to get anything done that you want, you need power. Which means you either have money or popularity. The money is with the studio executives, which then means that if you want to get anything done in Hollywood, you must become popular. You need to make a name and a legacy for yourself. The people within Hollywood have been viciously competing with each other since the moment they stepped into Tinseltown. Now, let's take this absolute outsider Vizipop. Alas, who got started with animations on Tumblr, then upgraded to doing shorts and finally shows on YouTube. Vivian has millions of followers and tens of millions of views thanks to her hard work. She brings in more money than most Hollywood folk without needing an agent, a guild, a team of lawyers, and sycophants, all of whom demand a cut of her success. 
Working from her own studio, Vizzy has outclassed many other creators by working outside of the system that the Hollywood folks slave within. And you can bet your bottom dollar that from the failed writers turned journalists to struggling artists and showrunners, they all glare angrily at Vivian's back and lust for what she has. Finally, let's just be frank about this. Has Been Hotel is everything that current year Hollywood writers want. It has a wildly diverse set of characters, LGBTQ plus representation, the main villain is a rowdy dude bro, loads of uncomfortable themes sprinkled throughout the story, it's a story that's led by women, and it has musical numbers, tons of them. So again, of course, these people would be jealous, these Hollywood types. But here's the kicker. People actually like Has Been Hotel as opposed to the stuff that Hollywood has been cranking out recently. From Christian circles, to the rainbow community, to car mechanics, to artists, to office folk, people everywhere like the Has Been Hotel. And that's what truly grinds these people gears. Because newcomers and outsiders, yeah sure they trip into Hollywood every day, and some of them get to make a name for themselves, but those folk have paid their dues to the system that just grinds everyone else into flour that Hollywood uses to bake its bread. <laughs> yes, well actually, that would be a giant. Now ogres, oh, they're much worse. Vivian, for her part, came in like a whirlwind with her YouTube fame, got a sweet deal with A24 Studios and Amazon to get her show, the kind of holy grail that these other creators want, and got it all slapped together. From the outside looking in, the story of Vizzy Pop and Has Been Hotel is a perfect underdog story with an inspiration for independent creators everywhere. However, as I pointed out to many of my students back when I was teaching, everyone loves an underdog story until they are facing that underdog. Hollywood cannot stand an underdog who has risen to their heights on his or her own merits and then succeeds beyond even their expectations. It flies in the face of their world and their pride. However, at the end of the day, these people cannot say anything about it against Has Been Hotel because bringing any positive attention to Has Been increases its appeal. And even going after Hollywood detractors here on YouTube over the show would only bring more eyeballs to the series, something that Hollywood folk cannot stand. So in this situation, it's better to stay silent and let the Has Been Hotel play out. While I guarantee that sensitivity readers and gangs of payroll psychophants on the side have all been sent to pester Vivian and help her make has been the way that Hollywood wants it to be. Stereotypical and stale. I don't know what I'm doing. I could really use some advice, Mom. <laughs> anyway, I'll stop talking before this gets long. Okay, okay, fine, so this is all scandalous and revelatory, but why should this matter to novice writers, or any other creator for that matter? Well, earlier as I said, as goes Disney, so goes the industry, and that rule can apply to the storytelling industry as a whole. As goes Hollywood, so goes entertainment. Whether we like it or not, Hollywood and its many studios have an incredible influence on everything from books to comics to television to cartoons to anime to artwork to programming to music to so much else. Nearly every form of storytelling has been co-opted by the forces of Tinseltown. So many people these days get into comics or books or webcomics or shorts or whatever else in the hopes of one day walking the red carpet to the big premiere of a movie that has their work in it. It's practically the American dream of creators. But the sad fact is that Hollywood doesn't like us. They're happy to use creators, but current year Hollywood does not support or champion creators like they once did. And for novice authors, if your end goal or your big dream is to end up in Hollywood, just know that you're getting yourself into something really messy. And that advice can also go for authors seeking traditional publishing options. It's hard to make a living doing things independently. Trust me, it's hard. So going the traditional publishing route carries with it great benefits, but also its own kinds of baggage and intense competition. Understand that many times what people want is just money and fame, and they'll play it safe with your work by making it stereotypical and stale. And if you're lucky, sexy.
But ultimately, Hasbin Hotel's performed very well. Vivian is getting a second season to her show, and she continues to be an inspiration to many creators. And like I always say, you need your stories. Your stories need you, and the world needs your stories. I personally feel like we're seeing that play out with how Vivian has been able to express herself and explore themes that she cares about with Hasbin Hotel, and with how it has entertained and resonated with so many people out there. But this is just the first part of a larger conversation that we need to have. Too many people give up their dreams, their ambitions, their stories, their imaginations even, in favor of letting others do all the work for them. As Hollywood has determinedly ignored Hasbin Hotel, they have been gleefully and loudly engaging in something else. The War for Modern Myth. While I have already done a video on that, Currently, I've seen a very disturbing trend where loads of people are sacrificing their creativity to put all their energy and care behind so-called champions. I know that me saying this sounds very grandiose and vague, but I intend to tackle this other side of the problem in an upcoming video, as well as what kinds of solutions we might be able to look towards in order to avoid an, aw an awful collision course that will destroy a lot of people's opportunities. And this will be one where I will dive into how people are hanging all of their hopes on just a few lawsuits, a few creatives, and a few projects to save the entire enter entertainment industry. Rather than capitalizing on all the opportunities to make their own stories or support the vast hosts of other storytellers who are eager to share their stories with the rest of the world. It's, if that's a topic that interests you, then please make sure that you're subscribed to Camille's Harem and that you've clicked the bell for notifications. And if you would especially like to support us in what we do here, I have published eight books that you can read. One of which is too spicy for Hollywood and traditional publishing. The Monarch Mercenaries, a tale of superpowered space pirates in a quest for revenge. And literally anything can happen along the way. If you're interested, Links for the Monarch Mercenaries and more are in the description below. Otherwise, thank you so much for joining us on this incredible adventure that we call writing. And until the next video, y'all, keep up the great work, stay optimistic, and tschüss. Well, I'm starved. Who wants some jambalaya now? Stay tuned.